Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. I'm out here in the Missouri Ozarks talking to a friend of mine who knows a lot about gardening and he's going to show us his special brew that he makes to enhance the growth of his plants. This is my friend Logan. Howdy. Hi Logan. Howdy. Um, I'm Tell not sure if I'm saying this right but it's uh, tricantinol. Um, this is a mixture of one part alfalfa, which I try to source without any non-GMO and no pesticides, herbicides. Um, it's one part wood ash and one part water with a tablespoon of sulfured molasses in there. Um, you let this brew for about two weeks or until it turns to the dark green almost blackish color that you get there uh, then you use one cup of that to two gallons of water and you take a cup of that then mixed with the water and you put that on your plants and that's supposed to promote root growth and plant growth by upwards of 200 percent um, just from what i've read so yeah okay logan, logan let me see if i have the formula right you said you use one part alfalfa and you want to use non-GMO uh, organically grown alfalfa mm -hmm. or one part alfalfa, one part wood ash, one part water. All right, and then in a uh, container like this, you want to add one tablespoon of sulfured molasses. All right, and you put this in here and let it uh, ferment um, for a while and um, say how long has this one been fermenting here? This is about a month old now. Or, okay. Yeah. You've been I've using been, some of this. I've been using it for a few weeks now. All right. So, so, so approximately when does it get to the point to where you can start using it? About two weeks old. All right. So after about yeah. two weeks, you can start using it. All right. And you said you mixed one um, cup per two gallons of yep. water. And then when you water your plants, you um, use about one cup of water. And how often do you apply that to your plants? Uh, I do it once a week. Once a week? Yeah. Okay. Along with my other fertilizers. All right. And as uh, as you mentioned to me earlier, you said it's very alkaline. Of course, having been made out of wood ash, it would be very alkaline. Yes. So you want to be careful applying this to your plants, especially your acid-loving plants, your acid yeah, like plants. Yeah, like blueberries. Yeah, yeah. like your and blueberries, all. right, which love acid. Okay. So, um, all right. Well, and um, I've uh, I've been out here touring uh, Logan's garden, and I can tell you that this stuff really, really does work. And it, uh, somehow it enhances the growth of the plants, enhances the germination of the seeds. He showed me some carrot seeds that germinated, what, in two, two days? days? Yeah. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> he has a fantastic uh, looking garden out here. And so, and what do you call this mix? Uh, I just call it my tricantinol. Tricantinol? Yeah. Okay, and try, so tricatinol must is that's like the chemical that's produced in here by yeah, the. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so it's close. That's okay. It's certainly close enough. And uh, I, I know when I get back to my garden, I'm certainly gonna start. And you said in, in place of um, the alfalfa, hey. You can use brassica. You can use brassica, brassica leaves. Like brassica leaves, like yeah. cabbage leaves, uh, broccoli yep. leaves, any brass, any leaves in the brassica. Yep. Brassica family. All right, Logan, appreciate it, and yeah. uh, we're going to give this a try, and we're going to see how it works in our garden back at home. Sounds when good. When I put that, the TC on these little guys here, uh -huh. it turned them to this slightly yellow color, and I've been trying to fix them since. Yeah, well, it's oh, because was... they're acid plants, right? Yeah, and I... <laughs> and what about this blueberry here? It looks like it's doing nice. Did you not yeah, put it on this no, one? no, I treated it this one, too, but it did uh -huh. not affect this one at all. Okay. Um, but it did affect the little, the one-year-old plants. Uh -huh. So caution using this on acid-loving plants, uh, especially if you already have so alkaline soil. this was another soil. test to see if the alfalfa would affect the plants without using it in a brew like that. Mm -hmm. So what I did is this area right here, you can see that I covered it with the alfalfa ground cover. Mm -hmm. um, and then this area was covered with just the field grass. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can look at the difference in these plants. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty pretty obvious. All right, so if you're just using alfalfa then as a ground cover as opposed to like just cut grass, then this is um, what it can do to your plants. Yeah. Much better, much better growth. Yep. 
And the only difference between these peppers, you said, and those over there is the ground cover. Yeah, is the yep. ground cover. These have alfalfa. This, all this was planted at the same time. Uh huh. Um, yeah. And the alfalfa. And here's uh, Logan's garden. And Logan, I understand correctly that you are new to gardening. Yeah, I've been gardening for about five months now. Five months now. Okay, he's a researcher, though, right? You do your research online. Oh right? yeah, <laughs> I spent the whole winter researching. Yeah. All right. So for you newbies to gardening, you can take the lesson from Logan is that if you keep do the research, read the books, do the research online, you too can be a gardener in a short period of time. And here we are with a close up of um, Logan's new garden. And uh, this is the first year you've gardened this spot. Yep. Logan. And these are these are Logan's uh, tomato plants here. Uh, he's using a uh, black plastic um, to keep the weeds down, keep the moisture in the ground. Here are his uh, bell peppers. Nice crop here. And these are some tomatoes. Uh, Logan said that he uh, didn't stake these up in town in, in time. So these tomatoes are kind of low growing. And over here, you have what's that? Cucumbers. Yep, cucumbers. Uh, this is a mix of the market more and then the straight eight. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to trellis these up 10 feet here. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have radishes. Radishes here. This is Clemson spineless okra. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got the cauliflower. Cauliflower. Uh -huh. And that one didn't really, is not working out. So anywhere where one of those died, I pulled it out and I've been planting kale. Okay. So those should be coming up soon and this and I remind you folks that this is Logan's first year at gardening and look at the basil <laughs> yeah we got a few different kinds here we've got uh, Emily sweet Thai and holy basil holy cow um, yeah no th these are all planted with different peppers mm -hmm. um, these will be coming up in hopefully the next couple of days Mm -hmm. Getting ready. This is for acorn squash and peas here. Building a nice gonna... trellis there. And over here, you see you have your herb garden. I see we got dill growing there. Dill, coriander, and thyme right now. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of yarrow. Are you planting parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he was familiar with that song. Uh, Logan being a little bit younger than me, but apparently he has heard that song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And what is, uh, oh, this is a coriander. Yeah. Or, um, oh, this here. Oh, I'm sorry, am I stepping on something? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trampling on, uh, that's yarrow. On, uh, yeah. Logan's yarrow. I'm sorry. Um, uh, problem with herbs is they look like weeds <laughs> to the, yeah, uh, to, to the uninitiated. Sorry. Ah, don't worry about it. Right. All right, here's Logan's uh, way of growing potatoes here. Tell us a little bit how you grow potatoes with this method, Logan. Well, these are super simple. Um, you just start with a one board section, mm -hmm. and this is a two by two um, square. Mm -hmm. Fill it with dirt, plant your potatoes, mm -hmm. and as they grow up, you just add another section of material and mm -hmm. add more dirt. All right, so you don't add more potatoes. The potatoes just continue to grow up. Correct. And you add more dirt and, con and the potatoes continue growing upward, but then you're having tons of potatoes growing down here in the bottom part. Yeah. And then when you get ready to harvest these potatoes, what do you do? Uh, just, you can just push these Yeah, don't over. do it, don't do it yet. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. You can just push these over and the potatoes and everything will fall out. Right, so you don't even have to do a lot of digging then. Yep. That's great, I've got One a... One of the things you do need to know about uh -huh. these though is that don't ever add more than six inches of dirt at a time. Oh, okay. If yeah. you add, even if the plant's taller, if you add more than six inches of dirt, uh -huh. your plants will just die off. Okay. Because um, I was adding two sections at once uh -huh. early on, mm -hmm. and that's a foot. And when I did that, the plants would just die. They'd All be right. dead the next day. Good information, Logan. I'm, thank you for sparing me that mistake. Yeah. <laughs> because generally I have to make all the mistakes before I get it right. Yep. So when I can get a <laughs> shortcut, I appreciate it. Okay, Logan, thanks a lot. We appreciate your time. Appreciate yeah. your uh, showing us your garden here. Yeah. And this is Survival Doc reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.